Welcome to Big Ramatha's Adventure. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn this into this. If you have an RV or travel trailer, odds are you have at least one external compartment on it similar to this one. Now this one here on our 2023 Intec OVR adventure is very deep. It's just over six feet deep, making it quite difficult to reach items in the back of the compartment. To make that a little bit easier, I wanted to build this tray that I could slide in and out and easily access anything that I want to store inside of here. Now, even if the compartment on your trailer or RV is smaller than this one, it may be very handy to build a similar tray and you can do it too. This was quite easy. I use mostly basic hand tools plus a table saw. Stick around, I'm gonna show you exactly how we did it. You can apply these same concepts regardless of what RV or trailer you own and what size your compartment is. You can have similar results to this. Unfortunately, there was an issue with one of the memory cards in my camera and I lost some of the footage of the assembly process. So I'm gonna show you what footage we did have available. And in the cases where the footage was lost, I'm gonna cut in some explanations of what was done so that you'll have full and clear instructions on how to build a tray just like this. Oh, there you are. So the first thing that we wanna do here is measure the depth of the compartment. Now. And if you happen to be doing this on the same type of trailer that I'm doing this on, the measurements are probably going to be the same, but it's always a good idea to double check those measurements. You can do this in a couple of different ways. Most folks are going to have a handy little tape measure, or I like to use this little laser measure. Uh, it does very quick and easy measurements here. So I'm going to use this. And we're only going to start with the depth. We'll come back and do the width later. As you can tell, the opening is a little bit smaller than the actual dimensions of the compartment. So we're gonna measure the width after we put rails in. And line this up. Quick measure. Actually, let's go back a little bit right to the edge. Okay, so I've got six foot, one and five sixteenths inch. Once you've measured the depth of your compartment, you're gonna to wanna to find rails that cover most of that depth. Now we were at just over 73 inches in there, but the largest I could find was these 60 inch rails that I found on Amazon. These were made by Vidania. This is not sponsored. I paid for all this stuff with my own money, uh, but I'll drop a link in the description below. So if you, are looking for something similar, you'll be able to easily find it. Now, one downside to these rails was they didn't come with all the hardware necessary to assemble them. Uh, they did offer a combo pack with the L brackets. You can mount these L brackets either direction. You can do it facing towards the inside of the rail like I have, or around the other side. A uh, quick trip to the hardware store and like an extra four bucks to get some one quarter 20 by three quarter inch carriage bolts. I was able to mount the brackets on here pretty easy. Now, this is gonna leave about a foot of space between the back of the rail and the rear end of the compartment. And so we'll be able to slide almost all of it completely out. This does fully extend 60 inches out past the end here. Uh, and that'll leave just about a foot worth of space at the entrance here. Still going to be a heck of a lot easier to get things in and out of this compartment versus having to crawl in there or get one of my kids to crawl in there. So next thing I'm going to do here is line these rails up and uh, secure them into place and then we'll measure the width. So we'll know how much space there is between both of the rails and be able to determine how or what the dimensions for the tray that we're going to build and attach to these rails needs to be. So we'll slide these in here. And as I mentioned before, this opening is a bit smaller 
than the height and width of the compartment. So I'm gonna line up the front bracket like I did on the other side here where it's at the very edge at the lip here. And then we're gonna slide this out so that this part comes in and we can make sure that that is as far towards the edge as it'll go. And it'll slide in and out real nice and easy. So now that that's in place there, I'm gonna screw down both sides of the front here, take a measurement and see how much space is between the inner wall and the outer edge of the rail to make sure that we are securing each one of the five on, e on each side. So there's 10 total brackets are the same distance away from the wall all the way from front to back. Make sure we have things nice and straight and ready for our tray to be attached uh, once we get that built. Now that I have the rails screwed in on both sides, I'm gonna slide them out. So these lock. And bring these all the way out. Oh, it's not coming out. There we go. So one thing to watch out for, the what I just got on on happened there, is even though there's a hump in this track to clear the bolts, it does take a little bit of force to get across where a couple of the carriage bolts are. We want to make sure they're down good and tight and as flat as possible. Uh, but I did notice that it takes a little extra force to get these fully extended. But now that they're extended, they're locked into place. And we can take our measurement to see what the distance between these is. So I'm going to use the laser measure again and put this here. We've got exactly one foot and seven inches. So now we're gonna go inside and use some scrap wood that I have laying around to build a tray that is six foot one inch long by one foot and seven inches wide. And then we'll come back out here and test fit it. I do plan on putting some like truck bed liner coating on it, uh, but before I go to the trouble of painting that on there, I will bring it back out here make sure that we've got everything sized appropriately and that it works. And then we'll take it back, paint it, and finish assembly, and we'll be done with this. So let's go inside and get that wood ready. I wanna talk about the mistake that I just made here. They say measure twice, cut once, and I did measure twice, but I still ended up having to cut twice. The reason being is that the laser measure doesn't work well if you're shining the laser at a reflective surface, such as the surface of these rails here. Another thing being the position that I measured from. I should have measured from inside the compartment where the rails were sitting rather than outside because with the rails extended a little bit, they tend to bow outward. So the combination of the rails being bowed outward slightly at the point that I measured and the laser measure having to deal with a highly reflective surface meant that my cut for my width here was about three eighths of an inch off. Fortunately, it was easily correctable. All I had to do was remove one side and then put it back on my table saw and run it down to shave that three eighths of an inch off, then put the side back on, screw it back together highly recommend using a tape measure and not the laser measure like I did and measuring the width from between the rails inside of the compartment here to make sure you have it correct. Now the reason that I had measured the rails with them already sitting inside the compartment was that as you can tell the edges of the uh, compartment here or the entrance, the opening, are rounded, so you don't have the full width available. You cannot measure between here and here because you have slightly less width available down at the bottom here. That ended up being 18 and 5 eighths of an inch here on my trailer. Maybe different on yours. Just make sure that you measure correctly here to avoid having to 
cut twice. Got a leftover piece of plywood here that we're gonna turn into the base of our tray. Now, ideally, I would have had a full sheet so that I could have just done one six foot one inch by one foot seven inch uh, piece of wood, but unfortunately, I only have a couple smaller pieces left over. Now, there's plenty of width here. Uh, we've got, I think, about 48 inches, so it's a full width of a sheet by 39 inches of three quarter inch plywood. Probably could get away with using smaller plywood. I just wanted to use up what I had. So you could go down to at least half inch, maybe quarter inch and still be fine here. I'm just gonna use up what I have. So we're gonna start off by measuring uh, 19 inch width on the short side here. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yes, 19 inch, 19 inch. One foot and seven inches is 19 inches. So we're gonna line up with the square. And I'm gonna start marking a line here. Put that on the line there. Come down to the other side. Make sure this is also at 19 inches. Get that lined up. So keep that on the line there. Perfect. All right, now hopefully that leaves us enough room on the opposite side here. Check that out. So yes, we'll be able to get our full six foot one inch of length here by cutting, uh, making a couple cuts here. We'll cut once down in length here to get our 19 inch wide by 48 inch long piece. And then we'll cut another 19 inch wide section there and then cut that down to the remaining measurements and put those end to end to get our full six foot one inch. Let's get the table saw here. Safety first or third. All right, now that we have our plywood cut, I'm gonna use these one by threes that I also had left over from my home theater project in the other room here. If you'd like to see a tour of the home theater, make sure you leave a comment below and uh, maybe I'll do a video on that some other time. But for now, let's get this measured. I'm gonna cut these down to 71 and a half inches because I want to use the full width on each end. Frame assembly was one piece of footage that got corrupted, so let's talk about it here. To assemble the frame, I just created some very simple, basic butt joints, as you can see here. Now, if you're more skilled at carpentry and want to do this a little bit differently, there are a lot of different options you can use for joints. I'm not so skilled, so a simple butt joint gets the job done here. Now, to secure these pieces together, just use two screws on the front to secure the front to the sides, did the same on both sides. 
and then repeated this in the back. Now once the frame was complete and I flipped this over, we just did a few screws along the bottom here, which are gonna be hard to see because the paint covering them up. But I did screws about every oh, 16 inches or so down each side and then three across the front here as well to secure the plywood into the frame that we built. For the paint, I wanted to use a durable non-slip or anti-slip coating. I wanted something similar to what you would use in a uh, truck bed, like a truck bed liner, uh, but not something that required spraying. So I found something called Duraback 18. Again, nothing in this video is sponsored. I paid for this out of my own money. This just happened to be what I found. Found it on Amazon. There may have been better choices at a hardware or paint store, uh, but this was just what was easily available for me. So to apply the paint, it came with a four inch textured roller. And this paint has like little polyurethane rubber granules inside of it. Needed to mix it up very well, roll the paint on and do a couple coats all over to get this in here. Now this has a very nice texture to it. It should keep things from slipping around. I do recommend doing this outside if you use something similar, if at all possible. Uh, it's very, very important to put it in a well ventilated area because the fumes on this stuff are really, really strong. Another piece of footage that was lost was mounting the tray to the rails. You can see that there are several screws on the front part of the rail here. Initially, I had the rail secured inside the floor of the compartment in the trailer and then attached these screws at the front here first. That did not work out and I'll show you why. So over here, right where the this little hole is in the outer rail is what's used to access the mounting points on the inner rail and with how the rails are mounted inside the trailer that hole is not sticking out far enough to properly access initially i tried just kind of screwing it in at an angle that didn't work the tray would catch whenever you tried to close it and then wouldn't fully close. So I ended up having to make some adjustments here. What I did was pull the entire tray out and then ended up reversing the brackets on the inside here. So these were facing inwards and then I had to change them to face outwards on the right side and redo it all the way down to the end. Now for the left side here, I had to leave them facing inwards because there's not enough room between the left side of the compartment and where this rail sits for them to face the other direction. This meant that I could not do more than just those three brackets on the rear the front two brackets here were covered up by the back end of the tray. Now this worked out okay. So taking everything out, mounting the tray outside of the trailer first, and then that allowed me to uh, fully secure the tray to the rails, screwing in the right side there first completely, then crawling in there and screwing in the left side made it secure enough for everything to, to work properly and slide with ease and be able to uh, fully support the intended weight here. Overall, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. The drawer slides in and out very easily. It locks fully open here. Push down on these tabs and see I can easily push it in with a couple fingers and then it locks into place as well. 
so it won't go anywhere when it's fully inside the compartment. Push down on these yellow tabs again and pull it back out. Now this is rated to hold up to 291 pounds. And even with the adjustments that I had to make here where I wasn't able to use all of the mounting points on the brackets, it's still quite solid. In fact, I'll demonstrate it to you. I weigh approximately 250 pounds right now and this will easily hold my full weight. Got this all loaded up, so let's take one last look. What are you doing in there? I just wanted to tell everyone to like and subscribe. Make sure you do what my son said. We've got a lot more content coming up. We're getting ready to do an 8,000 mile road trip to Alaska and back this summer. We're gonna bring you along and show you everything that happens along the way. And leading up to that trip this summer, we're gonna do a few more modifications on the trailer. So stick around for those. We'll also show you a few modifications on the truck. Make sure you stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one.